Hello, everyone, and welcome to the I2B2 Transmark Foundation community meeting for November 2019. Uh, my name is Rudy Potenzone, and I will uh, sort of be the host today for the meeting. You know, this is the agenda for today. We'll go to, through these various topics uh, and um, cover the, the materials there, and there'll be time for questions and discussions at the end. Uh, some of you who were on earlier saw that we're, we're trying a, a survey tool today that um, will get you know, hopefully get everyone a little more, you know, some a chance to interact more with us during these meetings. Uh, we have a, a few ideas on how we want to, to try to do this, but if you go to uh, www.minty.com, as it says there, type in that code, you should see on your phone or on your desktop a window that uh, has this, this survey. And so this is the first of a couple that we have. Uh, and if you, uh, you and the, the instructions are on the top there uh, still, and um, hopefully you see the results um, that we've got um, about 28% of you are ITB2 users and 14% are Transmart users. Um, quite a few OMOP Odyssey, Jupyter, and of course a lot of other tools. Um, as we start using uh, these more, we'll uh, hopefully we'll have some, some interesting questions that we can ask and uh, keep moving on. So thanks for responding here and uh, we'll move on. So I'm gonna turn it over to Diane Keto, Keo, sorry, our managing director, Diane. Hi everyone, um, thank you for joining today. I wanna do a couple of updates um, about uh, the work group updates, um, updates from AMIA. We're actually at AMIA um, right now and um, talk about the 2020 events before I hand it back to, to Rudy and, and Jeff. Um, so next slide, Rudy, we'll talk about the work group updates. Um, so uh, one of the things that we wanted to do was, you know, after the Tubingen conference, there was a really a lot of talk about having a, a separate um, user group, um, kind of a working group, we're calling it working group, user group for the European community um, for a number of, di of different reasons. Some of the Europeans use um, a Transmart a little bit more than ITV2, so we wanna like, you know, kind of focus a little more. Um, the other thing is, it's just it's just difficult to to coordinate times because of the time differences between um, Pacific time and and the European times. So we're going to be setting up this um, working group. Um, the meetings will be the first Tuesday of each month at uh, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So it'll be like in the afternoon in Europe. Um, so more details will be coming out shortly, but I just wanted to announce this. And also, if anyone is interested, I don't know if we have people from the, Europe, the European, and certainly if anybody from the US wants to be part of this, because they want to know more about what the Europeans are doing, you're absolutely um, welcome. Um, but if you're interested in um, co-chairing this, you know, let us, let us know, um, or interested in ideas, let us know. Um, Peter Rice um, will be um, really sort of uh, leading this effort and I will be helping out. So just wanted to let you know um, about that. Um, Rudy, you can go to the next slide. Um, the other update I wanted to mention, um, and I know we have Jim Campbell on the phone, is that um, the ontology working group has kind of taken a step back and looked at you know what they've been doing and how they can uh, best serve the the foundation so they're they're in the process of sort of reorganizing um, their efforts to support two things really a standard-based toolkit and um and also the entrepreneur um, users so the ontology working group is the third um, thursday of every month um, it, it, actually, this Thursday, there's an, uh, a meeting. It's at, at uh, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you're interested in jumping in and participating, um, if you're not already on the group, you can um, sign up on the uh, foundation website. So next slide, Rudy. So as I, and, and you can flip to the next slide. As I mentioned, um, Jeff Klan and I are actually at the um, AMIA conference um, now. It's, a, it's the, their national, um, AMIA has two, two different conferences that we normally go to. One is very focused on informatics, that's in the spring. And then the, the fall one is, is more of a national um, um, meeting. It, it does pull in people from Europe as well. I, I've noticed a, a number of people from um, our uh, European, um, 
group are here as well. And so it, it focuses on informatics, but it also focuses on clinical IT. And one of the things that they have is every year they have a, a major um, award, very prestigious award called the um, Donald um, uh, Lindenberg Award for Innovation for Informatics. Um, and this this award is, is awarded to somebody who has really um, had a commitment in the field and has dramatically altered the scope and, and extent of informatics um, practices and research. So it's it's really it, it's really a, um, a a very prestigious award. Um, it's for people that have done something that um, ha has really changed technology, um, you know, in the area of, of education and 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 contributed to the uh, biomedical informatics. Um, so it's it's a very it's a very neat award, and I you can go to the next slide, Rudy. And I um, am really you know thrilled um, and honored to to let people know that um, Sean Murphy um, received this award this year. So that was a um, it was pretty neat, and and obviously it's it's all around the work that he's done in in um, I2B2. So congratulations to Sean. They had a, a gala event, um, you know, black tie event. So it was it was um, it was pretty neat. So we can go to the next slide. Um, another thing I wanted to mention, um, we were a part of a panel um, that we put together. Um, and this panel was really looking at um, 10 years of open source applications that uh, have um, have really changed things and have, have moved things forward over the past 10 years. And we focused a lot on what the successes were and also what we learned and what the challenges were. Um, so actually you can pop to the next slide, Rudy. Um, the people that were on the panel, um, or actually, so anyway, it's, we were, it, it, I forgot about this slide. Um, so it, it was really a retrospective. We wanted, we wanted to be open. We didn't want to talk about just the good things. Um, so it was it, it really focused on open source and open science. So the next slide, I'll it will list the um, the presenters that were on the panel. Um, so we we talked about so Griffin talked about um, uh, profiles, which is an application that he has developed um, to to pull together um, people and um, and publications. Um, he also talked about Shrine, which is part of part of ACT. Um, there's other various applications around um, eagle eye and things like that. But what I wanted to mention is, and I my focus was really talking about the foundation and the fact that um, we need to really look at how to um, sustain these things after the grants are over, um, because that's just something that we um, that the NIH and organizations are are um, not focused on as they're, they're they're winding down their grant funding, and so we talked about setting up a nonprofit uh, foundation to support um, you know these things moving forward. So it was a really great it was a really great panel, a lot of great discussion. Um, Amy wants to pull us into their open source working group to really talk about lessons learned and, and how um, how things can move forward. So I I I'd be excited to take a leadership role in 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 that um, working group. Um, at AMIA. So Rudy, you can run to the next slide. Okay, this is where we're going to talk about um, the upcoming events. And I think this is where Rudy's going to um, use his, um, you can go to the next slide, Rudy. I'll let you kick this off, Rudy. Okay, so um, we're going to continue with this tool. Uh, if those on the line, you should uh, get to the next um, question. And uh, if uh, those of you who are, uh, haven't been on uh, yet, it's www.menti.com. And you put that code in and you'll see the question on your screen, whether it's your phone or your um, laptop, whatever. And just just gives us an idea of where, um, you know, where you might be thinking of going this year and what, um, you know, what types of conferences and we're you know again I this was just intended to, to be a first try at this survey tool um, uh, to see if first of all people like it and you're willing to use it um, but also you know we'll be we'll be trying to put some of these together more uh, broadly and I will also I will get a report at the end of everybody's responses and um, we can uh, circulate that actually we'll, we'll I'll put the survey I'll put the results in with the um, 
on the website with the slides uh, and the um, recording. So thanks everyone. We have 15 out of the 30 people online. So the next question was about uh, if you attended uh, any of the foundation uh, symposia this year or last year, uh, we'd like to hear you know what what you think about the different aspects of it. And so you should be able to move to the next panel uh, on your device. And um, there's a little slider for this one. This is a little different type of a question, and just put in you know what what you thought about the different parts and what how important they are or not important you know for your experience i don't know if people are having trouble moving over but there we go we try to do surveys at the end of these but um i i think we we need to get a little more find some better ways to to get input um, as we start to pull these together and you know it's uh it's always a difficult task creating the agenda and finding speakers and all and we're certainly hoping to encourage more of you to uh, participate in the planning part uh, of this okay so i think we'll um move to the next one um this is just, you know, a little fun one a little bit, but you know, we're, we are interested in the feeling about the fief to attend the symposia. Uh, obviously it costs money to run these things and we're, we're always trying to figure out ways to, you know, keep the cost down, but also give you a good, good experience. And um, we get a lot of comments about the food and the, uh, the social events around the, these meetings. It's interesting. Okay. And I think there's one more in the sec segment that I want to go through. Just wait and let the last couple people weigh in. No, lunch is lunch is more important. Okay, cool. Okay. So I actually you're gonna hold off on that next one. So Diane, let's go back to you. Okay. So um, as you know, June um, 11th and 12th will be the, um, the date for the, um, the meeting, the Harvard meeting in 2020. Um, so we, you know, it's, it's not too soon to start really planning that meeting to make sure that we're um, bringing in the right uh, people and putting the right program together. Um, so Rudy, can, you can go to the next slide. So we'd really, you know, we have a, an, an event um, planning committee. I don't know if everybody knows about that. We have a, you know, a handful of people that normally join that meeting. Um, we'd love to, to get more people involved and get your input on how to set up these meetings. I know it's, uh, you know, it's hard to travel to these things and these, and you know, I'm, I'm here at Amia, so I know how important it is that these meetings are set up right. So you're, you're um, using your time appropriately. So if you're interested in, joining our committee, um, please let us know. I think we, we um, usually have a monthly call. Um, if you're not on the committee and you don't want to commit to a monthly call, you can just you can send us some um, your, your thoughts and feedback. Um, we have to identify keynote speakers, you know, use cases. So if you don't know of any great keynotes or you have use cases you want to present, we'd love to have you participate. Um, also, if you want more workshops and educational breakouts, you know, let us know about that. Because I think, um, I think that, that that is something that we, we probably should do more of. Because like hands-on hands, hands -on type of work is um, where you're actually, you know, going home with new information and, and learning, you know, new tools would be great. So just wanted to mention that. So Rudy, you can go to the next slide. Um, so we, um, we do need to identify a, a a location for the 2020 European um, meeting. Um, 
you know, it's 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 great to have to know a year in advance uh, where you're going to go because the planning is going to need to start for this very soon as well. So we we had a, a couple of ideas. Maybe flip to the next um, couple slides. We had a couple people talking um, about a possible um, location in the um, the Netherlands um, outside of um, Amsterdam. And then the next slide. Um, is is uh, the UK. I think somebody would have mentioned UK. So those were the two that were sort of on the docket. There's absolutely no commitment um, from those at all. So I think that's part of the next question that um, that Rudy has has listed. If, if people could let us know, um, you know, what um, European city that they'd be interested in. And um... yeah, so here you just type in a city or, or country name. And the size of the word is going to, on the screen is proportional to the number of votes, say, that that city is getting. Oh, here comes Amsterdam is pushing ahead now. London was there. <laughs> Kind of like a race. Yeah, Amsterdam is a great place. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well that's that's cool. Um, we can move ahead. I'll leave this. This will be up on your your device, and so you can keep thinking about that and what you want to vote for. Anything else, uh, Diane? Here? Nope. I think uh, move on. Okay. Okay. Um, we're going to talk about, um, we have uh, both Transmart and I2B2 are in beta periods right now. Transmart with version 19 and I2B2 with uh, 1.7.12. Um, I'll quickly cover Transmart 19. We covered a lot of that uh, over the last couple of these meetings, I believe. But um, 19 has uh, a lot of a lot of changes, a lot of under the, the hood kind of things that have been modified as well as um, a couple of new things. Uh, we are continuing and, and pushing the, uh, the database schema to be the same as I2B2, uh, something that uh, we think is going to, to give us a lot of interesting uh, benefits. If um, you know you have the opportunity to open uh, the same, you know, some same data uh, in either application, depending on if you're looking, you know, to do querying of cohorts, um, you may want to use I2B2 tools or if you're looking at um, the, the, some of the statistical analysis in Transmart, but you know, more we'll talk more about that coming uh, ahead. But this is one of the, of the steps moving along the line to get this done. Um, we will be adding Fractalis, the new and exciting version uh, of SmartR that the University of Luxembourg has, has um, developed. Uh, that will be it's being integrated as well. Uh, a number of things like the cleaning up of the ETL um, and uh, some updates there. Um, we've added off. Zero for user authentication. Um, there's been a whole reorganization of our GitHub. We've uh, created a new GitHub repository holder for keeping all of the um, the foundation platforms, uh, and so that's uh, available. Uh, we've upgraded to Grails 2.5.4 and Java 8, uh, and Postgres and Oracle. But it's important to know that uh, all the features and plugins from 16.3, I see a typo, um, are there. Uh, and uh, with a, a lot of key bug fixes, uh, a lot of uh, thanks to um, Peter Rice, who's been uh, he continues to serve as our um, uh, release manager and does a, a lot of the work of, of doing a lot of the integration and a lot of the changes here. Uh, his time uh, has been donated uh, through Axiomatics, and uh, we thank them for their support to get this release out. Um, all of the changes are documented in our wiki, um, and um, uh, you can read more about it there, and uh, the the key um, uh, links are here. Again, when you get the slide deck, these will all be there, and uh, if you need to, to look a little closer. But obviously, all these are also on the website. Um, as we've um, as we've gotten closer to the holidays and end of the year, uh, we've decided not to push this too much, too hard to try to get it out. Uh, we've had some bad experiences trying to release in December just because of the holidays, and so. Um, we're going to the plan right now is to have the release during the week of January 6th. Uh, so if you have any time um, and you're you're sort of curious, please jump in and take a look at it. 
uh, the demo site is alive and it's working uh, so you can uh, play with it. That's it for that. Um, Jeff, uh, would you like to take over? Yeah, sure. Um, I, I don't know what the next slide is going to bring, so that's exciting. Um, okay. So we're, yeah. we're, oh, there it is. <laughs> there it there is. is. Great. We're, we're hard at work on ITV2 1.7.12. Um, it's uh, We are aiming to get it out as soon as possible. The code, it's code complete at this point, but we are, you know, we're doing testing, we're doing shrine certification, we're doing a variety of things. So our goal is to get it out by the end of the year. Uh, I'm sorry, by the end of the month, but certainly by the end of the year, um, we, we expect it to be released. Uh, so the things that we've added, um, there is a new install path for I2B2 that makes installation much easier. You can, uh, in fact, there are a variety of install paths that make installation easier. You can drop in a WAR file to get the application server. You can build the WAR file from source with one command now. Um, there's some shortcuts to setting up the demo data in the database. Um, and so it just it simplifies install quite a bit. We, we also hope that uh, uh, Kavi Wagholkar will contribute Docker images of the new release, so that will be a, an option as well. And we also have VMware images, which are always released with ITV2. So new ways to get ITV2 fast. We redesigned fine terms. Uh, I could go into a lot more detail on that, but I won't today. Um, but it's now a m much, it's a way of viewing the search for terms that maintains the kind of hierarchical structure of the ontology. So you get that richness of hierarchy when you're searching for terms. Um, that's based on some work that was done by other organizations, especially University of Washington's LEAF. Um, we now have integrated uh, counting scripts to uh, count the total number of patients with every concept in the ontology. Uh, that that con that idea has been part of ITB2 for a while, but now we've included scripts to actually do the computation. Um, we support new authentication protocols for uh, sign-on, LDAP, um, and, or, no, I think I got it wrong. <laughs> I won't try to pull that out of my mind right now. We'll sleep deprived. Um, and then we've got REDCap import. Uh, which is really, really exciting. You can have like a live link between your I2B2 instance and a REDCap survey that is automatically updated as users submit data. Um, and there are other enhancements, including, we're now including the ACT ontology, which is developed for the ACT network, but now it is included as an option to install when you install basic I2B2 to, to give that more visibility. We have not replaced the demo ontology. That's still there but we've added that addition. A lot of bug fixes made into this release. Uh, there's a, a preview of the release on the community wiki at that URL. You can also go to the itv2.org slash web client demo site, and that has also been upgraded to 1.712. So you can't do things like REDCap import from the demo site, but you can look at the new fine terms interface and some of the changes to the web client. Um, okay, thanks. Next slide. Okay, back to you again. Contributing code to I2B2. Uh, yes, so this uh, may have more information than anyone cares to hear, but uh, I wanted to talk about our kind of our new approach to contributing code back to the I2B2 core platform. This is as opposed to the community projects, which I think I have a slide on this actually, so let's go to the next slide. Um, yeah, not a very readable slide, but on the community wiki, there are um, dozens of community projects and anyone who has developed a tool that they want to you know, share, whether it be a write-up of the tool or the tool itself can get a page on the community wiki and we, we have a long history of, of sharing community projects, uh, cells and plugins and, and uh, database scripts and things like that with ITB2. But um, uh, next slide, really. Thanks. Um, the, the core has always been just developed by the ITB2 team uh, for good reason because you know it wanted to maintain its core integrity. But at, at this point, with the maturity of the platform, we're are wanting to encourage 
um, can community contributors to contribute code back to the core. And we are thinking through how to do that in a robust way that will allow us to maintain the integrity of the core in the same way that the Linux kernel is, uh, you know, maintained, but still contributors contribute components. So, uh, so what we are thinking at the moment is the subject of these next slides, and it is liable to change. So again, 1.712 is coming. This still says October. It's now November. Um, but we, you know, we added a lot of features. This is just by Jira issue. There were 21 new features added, um, and this was, you know, as of October, and more and more were added when the release date changed. So, next slide, please. And, and so in this release, we started to do some things to engage uh, engage developers more in the in the maintenance of and new features for the core. Uh, so the first thing we did was we added this release notes for future releases. So before 1.7.12 even had a coherent set of features, we created a release notes page for it and started to list the list our brainstorming of what we wanted to include. Um, and we you know, moving forward, we do want to continue to brainstorm with the community about what we should be working on. Um, the, you know, the core team right now, in terms of funded effort, is, is Mike Mendez and myself. And so we don't have a lot of manpower to uh, add new features, but we, you know, we do have some time we can put in. So we want to pick the right things and be deliberate about what we're working on. Um, in 1.7.11, uh, a standard open source license was adopted in ITP2. It uses Mozilla. Um, and uh, for a little while now, a little longer than that, uh, ITB2 has been using GitHub, so you can always follow the commits that are happening. You can download the you know, daily snapshot if you want and try you know, the latest stuff that might not might not even build. Uh, so it's you know more in line with how other open source projects do things. Also, our Jira is now publicly visible, um, so you have to be a member of the community to post a bug, but to see what work is going on is open to the public. Uh, we also had an effort that uh, Mike organized to gather beta testers from the community to try to get some additional beta testing. So we're really we're really wanting to open up the uh, the core to you know to have everyone involved in the uh, future directions of that. Okay, next slide, please. Um, this is a list that I'll just spend a minute on of uh, we we took some community con contributed features and added them to 1.7.12 and so this is really the first time we have you know in, a, in in any large way have taken things from the community and added them to the core of ITV2 and uh, this round they weren't you know dramatic uh, life-changing features for the most part but this you know demonstrates the beginning of getting features into the core. We we put the act ontology is big, but that that was already available. We just put that into the kind of the core download package of ITB2. Um, Beth Israel made a small change to the web client to make counts easier to read. Um, uh, Robert Bradford at UNC uh, added a small change to support extended query by value flags. Uh, for people who want to modify their ETL process to support those. Um, Mauro and, and University of Pavia added a small change to the web client to show the total num counts when you're in fine terms. Um, we borrowed a lot of UI design work. They're not any code from the LEAF team at the University of Washington. And um, when we're developing all these total num counters for all the database platforms, our starting point for Postgres was a contribution from the University of Washington. Uh, Dan Vianello, who's no longer with the University of Washington, but the, the script was written by him. So this is kind of our first pass. This is our first try at pulling things in for the community. Uh, some of these things were uh, like the ACT ontology was just something we identified probably should be included. Uh, a couple of these were pull requests on our GitHub. A couple of these came from conversations that one of us had with the uh, contributor in person. Uh, so um, I think next slide is about how to move forward from here. Maybe it's not. What's the next slide? Oh yeah. So this is just a little more detail on. Uh, you know, this is this is only the beginning of this process. We um, we took a design or some design hints. We um, 
added a feature that was turned off by default. We added some very small web client changes uh, or, or some things that are part of an ongoing project already. The ACT ontology is part of ACT, which is you know tightly tied to core ITB2. And the total num counter was developed as part of a PCORI um, contract. So that was also <laughs> closely tied to core ITB2. So this is, this is really just the beginning of trying to get things in, but um, we're, we're, we're working on thinking through this process of how to do this. Okay, next slide, please. Um, so the, the foundation has a page for code contribution guidelines, and this is, this is what Transmart uh, has adopted. And um, so I won't go through this. This is way too small to read anyway, but you can look at it on the, on the Transmart page if you're interested. This is not exactly what I think ITV2 will adopt, but um, this is kind of our starting point. Uh, next slide. So at a high level, the things we're thinking of moving forward for code contributions, if you have a feature that you want to contribute, well, first you should probably talk to us. And so we're on the same page on, get on the same page about this. But if you have some code that you want to contribute to the actual core, not to not to a community community um, plugins page, but to the actual core, then the way to do it will be to submit a GitHub pull request. And then um, the core team, which is my, myself and Sean, will um, review it and accept it if it seems appropriate. And uh, appropriate will mean things that are relevant to the core, which is the, the key platform of I2B2, maybe a little bit about getting data in and out, but not uh, very tangential things like visualization dashboards and things like that. Um, and then we, we would merge it into the, into the, the core system. Um, things that additionally need to happen uh, I just learned about this. There's this thing called the Developer Certificate of Origin, which uh, we'll show in a future slide, that certifies that not only is this code, you know, you're wanting to contribute to open source, but you have the right to contribute it. You um, wrote the code, and you have, you know, you, the organization you work for gives you the right to contribute it to an open source project, uh, or you have that authorization from the organization you work for. Um, so that's just a, a technical piece for, you know, Legally, we need we need to have that. This was this concept was developed, I think, by the Linux kernel um, group that needed some way of certifying that contributions were actually uh, contributable. And then um, this this stuff must be tested. Uh, it's not sufficient that it just runs in your local environment, but it really, it really needs to be tested. E even some of the tiny feature changes we took this time didn't work across you know some some of the more unusual environments that we need to test these things in. So we need to think through how to create a, uh, a, a test, like a, uh, a document with best practices for running through uh, testing these things to make sure that they're adequately tested. Uh, otherwise, it'll just become too much of a burden on you know, Mike and myself. And, um, and then, of course, when you contribute it, you also need to include unit tests if it's a server-side change. Um, eventually, we will support uh, unit tests with uh, a unit testing product for the web client, but at the moment it's just, you know, unit tests for the web client would just be a walkthrough of things to check that the, the, the buttons still work. Um, and then and then equally important, I think, is documentation, because if these features aren't documented, with the exception of maybe changing how counts look or something in the web client, but you know, without documentation on something like adding new flags for query by value, no one will ever know it's there and it will never get used. So it's very important to have um, end user documentation, installation documentation, and XML messaging documentation if that's applicable. So those are those are the pieces we're thinking, and welcome feedback on that after you know at the end I think or whenever. Rudy and Diane deem it appropriate to get feedback. I don't have a Mentimeter for this one. Um, yep, so, but that's what we're thinking right now. So next slide. Uh, this is the developer certificate of origin, which I won't read through in detail. The bolded parts, kind of the, the standard case, the, the contribution you're contributing was created in whole or part by me, and I have the right to submit it under the open source license indicated in the file. Everything below that is just variations on that theme. So next slide, please. 
there is a way to do this in GitHub, which we have enabled right now. And the the criticism is that if you do this via GitHub, you might not know you're agreeing to a developer certificate of origin. But it is, you know, this was this feature was added to GitHub for Linux kernel development, so it it is something that people use. So if you uh, if you do a git commit that you're going to do as a pull request, you need to do a git commit dash dash sign off, and then it will add a sign off line sign off tag to your commit that indicates that you have agreed to the developer certificate of origin. Not incredibly obvious that that means you signed off on the DCO. Uh, so I'm still thinking through, you know, how to make that a little bit more clear. But it at least, you know, crosses the, uh, you know, checks the box legally. And then, and then if uh, someone tries to do a pull request without doing a sign off, then it won't let us merge the pull request back to the base branch because it misses that key check. So that's the that's the current technical solution to ensure this that I'm not 100% happy with. Okay, next next slide, please. And okay, so 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 for 1.7.13, which we're starting to think about now, and will come out, you know, when it's ready, hopefully next summer or sometime. Ooh, start thinking through what you might like to contribute to it. These are things that I am thinking about for 13, but that this is not a final. Feature list, um, the things that I'd like to have in 13 are more import export tools, like uh, red cap export maybe. Uh, I've been doing some stuff with OMOP export, using OMOP import. Um, we could integrate some more uh, data export tools for output into other, um, other data formats, like for machine learning algorithms and whatnot. Um, there's all kinds of improvements that could be done for web client usability, depending on how deep people want to dive in. You could even start to refactor some of the web client so it's not uh, not as uh, married to you know, YUI from seven years ago. Uh, not something that the core team will have time to do, but we would welcome contribution along those lines. And there's lots of lots of improvements that I know people have done at their local institutions to the web client. We'd love to get some of those in. Um, I would love to see improved demo data, maybe expanded demo data. Um, and you know there's a lot of lot of opportunities for refactoring in I2B2. And I don't know uh, exactly how best way to accept refactoring changes is to uh, to a core project because it, a small refactoring change could touch a lot of files and be a difficult thing to review. But nonetheless, I think it's a ripe area for contribution to re have refactoring modifications for the ITV2 platform. So those are the things on my mind. Um, I don't know if I have any more slides. Uh, Rudy, can you go to the next slide? Uh, so, you're right. So if you want to contribute something, drop me or Mike or Sean a line, or post a message on the Google group, engage whether there's interest and other people might want to join you on that. Um, and of course, I hope you all know there is a Google group for ITV2. It's called ITV2 Install Help, but it's really become kind of the ITV2 discussion group, the technical discussion. So it's not just installation, it's also usage and ETL and feature development, things like that. Um, okay, I think that's it. Thanks very much. Okay, thank you, Jeff. Um, what I thought we'd do now is switch back to our um, survey thing. By the way, here's uh, the results of at least 11 votes for the um, location. And I'll go to the next slide. And what I've put here is uh, this is kind of a open board that anybody can type in a question uh, now. And it could be about the Jeff's presentation, about the ITB2 or Transmart data releases, um, about the, the upcoming symposia or uh, anything from AMIA. That, that Diane presented, um, or anything about the foundation. So if you have a question, feel free to just type it in here and we'll all see it, and um, one of us will try to answer.
Okay, Jeff, I think that the middle one is yours. I'm getting a lot of interesting questions. Or, yeah, okay, I'll take the middle yeah. one. So okay. we, um, in, in 12, there was a request from users in ACT to support NTLM v2. So Mike added that and also Okta. Uh, so those are supported in 12, and that's all that's gonna make it into 12 because 12 is coming out in less than a month, hopefully. Uh, as far as OAuth, I've, I've talked with some people about adding OAuth to ITV2, and I think that would be great. Um, I, I don't know that that is immediately on the roadmap, but I'll, I'll add it to the list of things that we should work on. I think I, I spoke with someone who had actually been developing this at their local institution. So uh, I'll try to remember who that was and, and uh, engage that person. But so so you can see that in the future. But right right now it'll be NTLM V2 and Okta will be the new ones. Um, you want me to pick another one, Rudy, that's for me? Yeah, if you want. <laughs> like a grab bag of question. Okay. Yeah. Has the plugin architecture changed in the new version? Uh, I wish it were a little more interactive because the plugin architecture has not changed. Uh, the web client is uh, the same uh, the same architecture it's always been. Uh, I know there's a lot of room for refactoring the web client. I, I'm not sure if someone could put something in the chat box, but I am curious what new architecture one would hope for, because we could think about that for a coming release. But uh, no, nothing's changed in that regard. Okay. Let me um, just let me comment on the install base for ITB2 and Transmart. Unfortunately, we don't have a good handle on this. We try to um, anecdotally, you know, we watch publications, we watch presentations where we can, um, but it's something that, and, and previously with Transmart, we've done surveys um, across the, the community uh, to get some, some idea, but uh, it's something that we've been talking about trying to, to do another uh, kind of much more rigorous um, reach out to the community to, to get a better idea of you know who's using i2b2 and transmart um, in, in actual projects um right so what am i going to pick next <laughs> is there documentation <laughs> on how to use access i2b2 as endpoints using python i really like that someone asked that uh, because I was just talking to someone about that or yesterday. Uh, I, think, yeah, I think I think that would be cool. I think that that that's something that we, we should really think about adding. Um, I mean, you, certainly it's a REST API, so you can do it, but there's no there's no documentation on it right now. So maybe the thing to add is just documentation. That would be cool. Um, is there coordination of authentication methods between i 2 and Transmart? Uh, Rudy, what do you think? For the most part, we haven't well, we haven't really yeah. coordinated between I, I, as much as we should. I think both of, both of those are new, right? In this, these upcoming versions, uh, with some new ver new methods, but um, we we do have a, a technology committee now who is exactly looking at topics like that, and uh, something that we will hopefully coordinate. And certainly, as I to B2 and Transmart have the opportunity to uh, interoperate on data sets um, with the, you know, using common data model. Uh, this is going to become a very important um, capability. So you, I, the answer is yes, but we don't have a plan yet. Um, yeah, so the one that so did I know I should go in a little bit of order, I guess. But what was the URL to the one that sold the seven to twelve the demo version? So the live demo is just i2b2.org slash web client, or there's actually a link. If you just go to i2b2.org, you might be able to find it. We tried to make the web page more intuitive, but just i2b2.org slash web client. Um, but again, that's just a demo of the web client. So you, the back some of the back end changes are not visible from the demo. Um, and then is there a recognized, if not official Docker image for ITV2 and Transmart? I'll comment on the ITV2 half of that. Um, yeah, not official, but recognized. Uh, Kaviway Kolakar has been maintaining Docker images. It's, they're a little behind right now. He's going to build one for 1.7.12. I think the last one might have been 10. He might have just missed a version in there. And so he will be building those. I, I've used them. They work, they work quite well. 
So, um, but then again, I don't know of people using them in production. So that's maybe it's why it's not, has, I wouldn't say it's official because, you know, we don't, we don't condone it for production necessarily, but it's, it, they do, they do work. And so we'll, we'll release that information somewhere with documentation for ITBT 1.7.12 or, or maybe on the homepage of the community wiki, um, which is where we tend to announce these things. And what about the Transmart side, Rudy? On, on Transmart, it's something that we're interested in. We haven't um, done it yet. Uh, I know that there are people who have done, you know, you have created it in Docker. Um, and I believe that uh, after the release is, is, is out, uh, it's something that we will look at and hopefully get a, an official version. Uh, unless, um, I don't know, Peter, do you have any plans? Let's see. Peter, I just opened your mic. Do you, you have any more to add about Docker and Transmart? Uh, no official plans, no, but there yes, are okay. Yes, okay. there are uh, um, existing Docker, like I2B2, there are existing Docker efforts that we can build right. on. Yep. Great, thanks. Your mic is open now too, Peter, so you can jump in if you see other questions. Uh, let's see. Well, basically, we, I think we may have hit all of these that are out there. Is this useful? Is, is this um, a, a, a reasonable way to communicate? Uh, if anybody has any comments, uh, we'd love to hear about it. And it's very easy to put these, these things together. Okay, um, Diane, do you have any any closing remarks? We'll keep an eye out because anything else comes in. No, I'm I'm glad um, I'm glad. To thank you, everyone, for joining. I hope um, you know we do want feedback on on these meetings and how we can make them more interactive. And hopefully, this is um, headed in the right direction. But certainly, as Rudy said, if you, anything else, let us know. Other than that, I will. Uh, um, wish you a good day. Okay, thanks everyone for coming. Again, the recordings will be and the decks will be available uh, within a couple days. Thanks everyone. <laughs>